What is up, internet basketball junkies? We are back to look at another drill today. Go hit my drills for high school coaches playlist on my channel for more drills like this one. Before we get started, shout out to Dr. Dish. Go visit drdishbasketball.com to learn more about their game-changing shooting machines. And shout out to Fast Model Sports. I use Fast Models tools for all the diagrams you see in my videos. Now let's dive into the drill. We call this drill PPS, short for Post, Position, and Score. This is exclusively a big man drill, so our posts do this drill while the guard post breakdown portion of our practice is going on and the guards are doing something different that is more guard specific. This is primarily teaching a drill for what we call single pivots. Single pivots are footwork, usually for our bigs, that just involves pivoting to create a shot without using a dribble. Eliminating the need to use a dribble inside can make your big men a lot more efficient. I think one of the most interesting things with teaching post play is the need for a lot of coaches to make things more complicated than it needs to be. Like sometimes we forget we can just shoot over top of the defense without any moves at all. I'm as turned on by an Akeem Olajuwon dream shake as any basketball junkie out there, but it's not really a move that's applicable to high school basketball at all. This drill is all about getting players comfortable with the most simplest form of shot creation on the interior. Players work in pairs and alternate with each rep. The defense is playing dummy defense, giving some physicality on the seal and a solid wall up on the shot attempt. They are not fully live trying to get a stop or a steal. They are guided in how they are going to approach the rep. The primary function of the defense is to help the offense grow, not necessarily refine defensive technique. The rep is done on the shot attempt with no offensive rebounding or defensive rebounding element. Now onto the offense. The offense starts the rep by initiating upper body contact to start a seal. But the seal is really done with the lower body. The upper body contact stuns the defender so that the lower body can seal off the defender by stepping over top of the defender's legs. The lower body is the key to locking out the defender and creating a healthy space to receive an entry pass into the post. Once we've created the space to catch the ball, it's time to work on our single pivot moves. The single pivot is what you're watching now, and the move that the players have been working on throughout this video so far. This move is uncomfortable at first for players, but they get used to it with a little practice. Most players aren't used to being limited when they catch the ball inside. They want to hold the ball, read the defense, dribble the ball, and make moves. This single pivot move establishes the first option to be a simple front pivot into a shot over top of the defense. If this move is overplayed, we can counter from there, but we will get into that more later in the video. The single pivot is a beautiful move. As the post establishes position, he can feel where the defense is and set this move to be performed away from where he feels the pressure on a seal. It's the same move to either side, just switching the footwork. It keeps the ball protected all the way through the move, never exposing the ball to the defense. Another great thing about this move is that it naturally keeps the body between the ball and the defender. This is a buffer of protection from a shot blocker and forces the defense to have to come through the body of the offensive player to get to the ball. It simplifies reads. On the pivot, if the offense has an advantage on the defense, he can just simply shoot over top. And even square to the basket in the air, removing the shot blocking blocker buffer, but making the shot attempt easier and closer. If the offense makes the single pivot and finds themselves in a neutral position, again, they can shoot over top of the defense, but they keep the body buffer in place. If the offense turns off the single pivot and the defender has clearly beat him to the spot or has a significant size advantage on the offensive player, the offensive player needs to counter. In this disadvantage, the buffer of having the body between the basketball and the defender is probably not enough. As you're watching now, we are starting to get into our counters. As we front pivot on our single pivot move, we peek at the rim. In this split second, we are recognizing whether we are in an advantage, neutral, or disadvantage state. In the advantage or neutral position, we probably take the shot if it's within our skill set. In the disadvantage position, it's time to pass out or counter. The first counter is a drop step to the other side. Combining the single pivot with the drop step stresses the defender to cover laterally. Players should only go to the drop step in the series after the single pivot has been explored wholeheartedly. 
If the sequence is executed with a little bit of quickness and fluidity, it's awfully hard for the defense to beat the offensive player to the spot on both sides. All right, internet basketball junkies, as we take a break from this film, there's a few things that I need from you. One, if you're liking the content, give this video a like and share it with a friend. Also, make sure to hit the bell to get notifications on future videos and check and double check to make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Also, click the link in the description to my Selfie store. I have detailed basketball coaching content for sale, including a sample of documents to help you with your program's culture, a guide to fundraising for high school basketball programs, a sample of documents to help you with your program's organization, a strength and conditioning guide for high school basketball coaches, a guide to running a 131 half court trap, and my personal favorite document that I've ever written, the Youth Basketball Curriculum, which is my spin on over a thousand pages of reading I did putting together a plan in place to progress basketball players from first grade all the way until they are a graduate of high school with age-appropriate skills, drills, and thoughts for coaches at each stage of the development. All that and more, go visit my store. Also, I've accumulated just about every resource I have into a product which I call My Portfolio, which is not only what I would present to an interview committee to interview for a high school basketball coaching job, but also every supporting document we use to run our program. This includes the youth basketball curriculum, our drill book with diagrams and descriptions of every drill we use, an off-season skill development plan, how to fundraise for a basketball program, and much, much more. Check out the link in the description to see all the content that comes in my coaching portfolio that's now for sale. Now back to the video. From the drop step counter, we are then going into a running hook. The running hook starts with the same footwork as the single pivot, but rolls into a lateral drive instead of stopping to read the defense. This should be a move used with a quickness advantage in the post. When done properly, the running hook still has the buffer of keeping the body between the ball and the defender. However, it does require dribbling, which always increases the risk of a turnover. This is a powerful move that plays off the single pivot footwork, but it's more of a finesse option than the simple single pivot shot over top of the defense. As we finish with the last move, we are using the front pivot from the single pivot move, rolling it into the dribble like the running hook, but then coming to a composed stop a composed jump stop, the jump stop presents a whole host of finishing options in itself. If you've made it this far into the video, you know I'm going to advocate for just finishing over top with the jump stop. In this film, you're seeing how players are using the front pivot turnaround move at this point in the video. I have some extensive videos on finishing from a jump stop already on my channel. If you're looking for a recommendation, search for the video Jump Stop Finishing. The video covers a drill to get a lot of reps finishing off a jump stop and a lot of pivoting techniques we finish off of our jump stops. It also shows a way to transition the jump stop finishing techniques into live play, which is something missing from this video. Anytime we are doing guided play to work on technique, we want to then back it up with live reps so players can put the technique into action while making the reads themselves in live play. But this video isn't really about jump stop finishes. It's about creating a seal in the initial footwork to attack a defender. It's obvious simple footwork to use to attack a defender with limited risk and being able to read the defender to make a decision. The most risk you have in using this footwork is the travel call if it's not executed well. Thanks for breaking down this drill with me. Go visit my Selfie store. The link is in the description.